a college education and I could not find a job. I had two years of experience in my, f in my field of counseling and I could not get a job. The bank was going to foreclose on the house. There was no money, there was no food. I was down to the point where I was getting food from the food pantry. The town was helping me with my electric bill. I had to come up with something else to do and with uh, things changing the way they changed, people became interested in secondhand clothing. Ten million Americans are unemployed or underemployed. For many more, having a job does not guarantee freedom from poverty. The gap between the rich and the poor is greater than it has been since the 50s in this country. Self-employment is growing, up almost 50% since 1980. For some, it's an opportunity. For many, it's a necessity. 10. To start a business, you need money, and if you don't have it, you need to borrow it. But that is not always so easy. If you have money, you can get money. But if you don't have money, it's when you can't get it. For me to go make a $500 loan, in order to, to underwrite that loan, book the loan, the cost would be prohibitive. I would, I would lose money on every loan I made. A new strategy has emerged called micro-enterprise development. In the past few years, almost 300 nonprofit organizations have become micro lenders. It's not a charity. It is really a replication of the way the economy works, except it makes it work for people that it usually doesn't work for. In this hour, we'll meet micro entrepreneurs and micro lenders in four communities in America. We'll ask, what promise does micro-enterprise hold for individuals, for communities, for our nation? The Arkansas Delta region bears more than its share of the country's poverty. Unemployment levels are twice the national average. Local poverty rates approach 40 percent. When I went to the bank, I was only trying to borrow like $5,000 to start. But you would think that I was trying to borrow like $200,000 or something. Brenda Kearney owns Kearney's Cleaners in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And to me, it seems as if if you have money, you can get money. But if you don't have money, it's when you can't get it. Indian girl, I had nowhere to go, I wasn't going to be anything. And those were the expectations people placed on you. I remember growing up in poverty in an alcoholic home, not having any type of support, you know, thinking that nobody else is facing the same problems of you as you are. And I remember what I always call it my first salvation was my horse in the Badlands. Monica Turkelson is a loan officer for the Lakota Fund, which provides loans and training to members of the Lakota Nation on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. The Lakota Nation has endured a history of disinvestment. Most of the land that is on the reservation that people own individually is actually held in trust by the federal government, and it's very hard to use for collateral. You know, lack of credit was one of the obvious barriers. Almost $75 million comes onto the reservation annually, largely through government programs. Almost all of it flows back out to border towns outside the reservation. A decade ago, 
there were only 40 storefront businesses on a reservation the size of Connecticut. Only a few were owned by tribal members. Today, more than 80% of reservation residents are unemployed. Per capita income is less than $3,500 a year. You can go in a lot of houses here and there not be running water or bathrooms, indoor bathrooms. Shannon County for the last 20 years has been rated the poorest county in the United States.